Five, macroeconomic stability is a prerequisite for economic recovery. Countries need to get the fundamentals right, fiscal, monetary, and exchange rate policies, so there can be stable economic conditions that permit markets to expand, trade can resume, people can rely on a currency as a store of value, and investors can feel more secure about saving and building. But we also have to recognize that fragile states are just that, fragile, especially in the face of sudden shocks. They need specialized, real-time monitoring that can assess and respond to changing external conditions, such as the fast-rising food and energy prices we've seen, and to do so with speed and some flexible support. The international financial institutions, including the IMF and the World Bank Group, need tools to be able to help quickly, such as by clearing arrears and then to fill gaps promptly, whether for governmental capacity, food, or balance of payment support. Sixth, effective efforts to address fragility and conflict have to be grounded in a political economy that is capable of sustaining the peace. This means taking into account relationships between power and wealth in society. Conflict and instability can, after all, be a lucrative business for those in power who may exploit state resources or profit from violence. Putting in place the economic incentives for stability and peace may not be enough if donors don't have a good understanding of who wins and who loses from peace elements. Donors need to understand the history of a country and its people, who holds power, how power is brokered and used, how those ties between those relationships are linked to formal institutions. And frankly, this kind of expertise does not always come easily to those schooled in more traditional development disciplines. Seven, it is important that a focus on building state legitimacy, capacity, and performance not lead us to overlook the most important sustainable engine of recovery and growth, a healthy private sector. Private sector development and the creation of small businesses spur investment, jobs, opportunity, and hope. A healthy private sector will eventually provide the sustainable revenue for a legitimate government. To some extent, private sector development can happen even in the absence of formal legal frameworks in financial sectors, drawing on private remittances and transfers from abroad. But early efforts to signal the value that the government places on investing in the future, whether through work or through capital, are vitally important. Enforceable property, contract rights, and basic security that prevents predation on businesses offer the foundation. Transparent and very simple rules can lower the costs of doing business. Given the risks and uncertainties of investing in a post-conflict environment, fragile states will need a combination of public and private support. Institutions such as the World Bank Group, through our private sector arm, the International Finance Corporation, can provide investment and advisory services. We can help assess the investment climate, develop basic financial services and microcredit, encourage better governance and rule of law, and enable the environment for private sector activity. But in addition, we need to acknowledge that there's a risk simply in dealing with fragile states. We need to be prepared for some projects to fail in these countries if the larger effort is to have a chance.